Okay, anytime. Social media has almost completely surmounted our lives, and whether this revolution has affected the world for the better or for the worse can easily be debated upon. The number of social media users worldwide in 2019 was 3.48 billion, up 9% year on year. The significantly large number can be seen in adolescents as almost every teenager in today's society can be seen carrying a smartphone device. This heavy use of social media brings about many different effects in the lives of these young adults. However, one prime effect that social media has on adolescents is the idea of conformity. Socially speaking, conformity can be clarified as behavior in accordance with socially accepted conventions or standards. With the rise of social media in the recent decade, this idea of conformity has proportionally risen as well. More than ever before, people have the intrinsic need to be around others, whether that be through the internet or in real life. Although conformity does bring people together, this interconnectedness can deeply affect an individual's mentality and completely limit their individuality as a whole. This revolution brings up my question, how is the global rise of social media affecting the level of conformity present in adolescence? Before I answer this question, I am first going to dive deeper into the history of conformity. Then I'm going to look into how social media comes into play to finally be able to propose a solution to this growing problem. The earliest evidence of conformity can be seen when our ancestors formed tribes. At this time, the main purpose of forming these unions was so that groups of people would come together to hunt and gather food. Jillian L. Anzalone from Rochester Institute of Technology states that one cannot live without sustenance, so aligning with a group for the purpose of attaining food together would benefit the individual. She continues to explain that these early tribes were created as a form of survival, and if they weren't created, that our early ancestors may not have survived, therefore adding survival value to the idea of conformity. Today it can be seen that people continue to rely on groups for specific needs. However, the purpose behind conforming in today's society has shifted. John M. Levine, psychology professor at the University of Pittsburgh, explains that people conform to group pressure in order to satisfy two important desires. The desire to have an accurate perception of reality and the desire to be accepted by other people. Levine explains that people conform simply because they are afraid to stand out from the rest of the group and want to be accepted by society. Conformity can be seen in day-to-day -day life, but is especially evident through social media. Reason being that the internet is a place where unusual habits are obtained because people begin to compare themselves to others, leading them to change specific aspects about their lives and ultimately become part of a conforming society. Like many situations in life, there is a balance between the good and the bad. With social media, Edward Kessler, the founder director of Wolf Institute and a leading thinker in interfaith relations, states that although social media has the potential to foster interfaith dialogue and to spread individual freedom, it has an equal capacity to reinforce packed identities and mob rule. Negative consequences are equally part of the potential of the social media exemplified by a coarsening of debate and increasing polarization that have grown directly from a fashionable political incorrectness on websites where anonymity is guaranteed. Clearly, the balance between the good and the bad of social media is clear with what Kessler is saying. Ultimately, it all comes down to how the individual chooses to use the platform entirely. The bad side of the spectrum is where a majority of adolescents lie. They choose to use social media as an example of how they should live their lives and get so used to conforming they are not even aware they are doing it. It can be seen that the concept of conformity is nothing new. However, critics argue that it is not a problem we should worry about. If anything, they say that conformity is a concept we should embrace instead of escape. Michael Muthu Krishna of the University of British Columbia, an author of a new study published in Evolution and Human Behavior, told UBC News that people are conformists and that's a good thing for cultural evolution. He furthers that by saying that by being conformists, we copy the things that are popular in the world, and those things are often good and useful. What can be seen is that critics such as Muthu Krishna fail to understand the impact of social media on conformity. They fail to consider that we are living in a generation where social media is at its most prominent state. And because of this, they say that conformity is beneficial. However, it is evident that it is anything but that through many studies performed by researchers, 
such as the Milcom shock experiment, that prove conformity is a problem worth solving. Therefore, with this growing problem present, society needs to look for ways to slow down the growth of this issue and eventually diminish it once and for all so that individuality will be expressed to its maximum potential. In order to bring conformity to its most minimal state within society, we need to begin by looking at how this problem arose. As previously stated, this concept has been integrated in society for thousands of years. Therefore, social media is not the cause of the issue. However, it is responsible for bringing the problem to its most problematic state. The most productive way in which conformity can be prevented is by letting young adults know that they need to begin to doubt themselves. Sokol Archin, holding a bachelor's degree in psychology, describes this idea in detail. The first and most important thing you need to do in order to escape the herd mentality is to question all the beliefs that have been handed to you by tradition. Beliefs can be tremendously harmful if they are not based on solid evidence. They can suppress your critical thinking, distort your perception of reality, and urge you to believe in irrational ways. Essentially, by questioning what they believe and not being so willing to trust others, adolescents will be able to see the fault in others' reasoning. They will be able to make decisions on their own and not conform to the ideas of others. In order to do this, society's view on social media and its purpose needs to be altered. Accomplishing this goal with society is a difficult task to complete, and many limitations are present that prove the reasons as to why a solution to this problem has yet to succeed. The most hindering limitation of this solution is that it is not pragmatic. This problem is being looked at from the perspective of an entire generation within society, and we are hoping to completely alter the mindset of that generation, which is a very difficult task to complete. Not only is it not pragmatic, but additionally, the issue of conformity through social media doesn't affect every individual the same. In fact, some may be affected by conformity, but not in the negative way in which I have portrayed. Instead, they use others' ideas as inspiration and look to others as role models in ways to better themselves. Because of this possibility, it is clear why it would be difficult to alter the mentalities of every adolescent living today and completely diminish conformity as a whole. Ultimately, social media does create a toxic environment, but if used responsibly, it can be an incredible form of expression. Society needs to be educated on the negatives and positives of social media so they can use it to its fullest potential. Once educated, they have already taken the first step to fully expressing their uniqueness within society. They will begin to stop looking to others for answers and begin to look for all the answers within themselves. Question number one. What information did you need before you began your research and how did that information shape your research? So the biggest information that I need before I began my research was I needed to know what conformity was and how it specifically affected people. I didn't want to look, uh, I didn't need to know how it affected social media because that's what I would be researching. So I just needed to know the general idea of conformity once I knew that I was able to find how conformity and social media together related and make those connections and further my research. Question number two, how did you use the conclusions and questions of others to advance your own research? So the conclusions and research of others um, essentially made my claims stronger because I was able to look at different types of sources and even ask other people how they viewed my topic and to see if they were affected by conformity in the way that I portrayed. And after I found out that it was a common problem, I was able to further my claim and make it stronger and even counter some of the counter claims. Thank you.